Hi, I'm Mike. The high tunnel continues and there's only a few steps left to go as we now head into the final lap. Hopefully. Come see where we are today on the project list on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Welcome back. Please subscribe and follow our journey as we build the high tunnel here in Northeast Wyoming. The tunnels become quite a project and with just Aaron and I working on it, the timetable has stretched out much farther than we thought it would. Over the past few weeks, we've been building this thing from the ground up. And although the structure itself looks pretty simple, there is more thinking and planning into it than one may imagine. Once all the ribs are in place and held together, the basic structure is built. This is the second high tunnel we built here on the ranch. The first was built back in 2015. We decided to build it to lengthen the gardening season for Aaron and for Farmer's Market. Making tomatoes and other vegetables available earlier and longer into the season than they normally would be. The first tunnel we built was built by the book. And this is what we ended up with. It worked great, but it didn't take long until we started realizing that improvements could be made. The first problem we began running into was our end doors. The original tunnel had fabric end doors with no support structure. It flapped and waved in the wind. It led air out and in to the tunnel. And within a few weeks, we realized that changes need to be made. That's where I took my first stab at end framing on a high tunnel. When we did it, I couldn't find any pictures or videos from other people who have done it. And basically I was left to just figure it out. I framed it in the best I could but I always knew that if I had to do it over again, I could do it better. Well, guess where we are right now on the new high tunnel. We're at the point where we can start framing in the end walls. Eventually, walls will lend stability and integrity to this entire structure, and I can't wait to get started. One of the great things and one of the horrible things about building a high tunnel is that you get to do everything multiple times over and over again. It's great because you get to practice and you get quicker at it, but it's also horrible because, well, you have to do it over and over again. Today, our goal is to get all of our posts in the ground that'll make up the vertical portion of the end walls and get at least one end completely framed in, ready for sheeting. I've already gotten a bit of a head start and I set all the posts for one end in concrete yesterday so that we can frame that end up today, but we still have to build and set the posts for this end. The first step is the layout. The end of the wall will be flush with the rafter so we can string across and measure out our placement for the posts. In the middle of the wall will be a hole for a nine foot roll up garage door. So we're sure to measure for that too. With the holes marked and laid out, then the post hole digger and the bobcat are brought back in. Each hole is dug to about three feet deep and cleaned out until it's ready for its post. These posts have to be pretty beefy, so we're gonna build them ourselves. Each post is made out of three pieces of two by six lumber. The distance from the bottom of the hole to the top of the rib will determine how long they need to be. Our two outside posts come out at about 150 inches or 12 feet, six inches. After cutting three boards, then we can screw them together, creating a post that is five and a half inches wide by four and a half inches. As each post is made, we take them over and dry fit them into the holes. They're still a bit long, but that's okay. We can fix that in a bit. Together, Aaron and I make sure they're level and then concrete them into place. Then once we have them set, we can cut off the excess. The center posts will both be built the same way, but this time we're making 16 foot long posts. These ones are a bit trickier to manage, but after cutting one down to length first on the ground, then lifting it into place, Aaron and I can concrete it and level it and plumb it. This board here on the ground is our spacer board. The garage door that needs to go in here needs to be nine feet. So the board will make sure there's nine feet in between these two inside posts. This one is cut for length on the ground as well, then lifted into place where Aaron secures it with more concrete. We're gonna go ahead and give this end 24 hours to cure. And while we're doing that, we're gonna start framing out the other end. These posts have been set for a day and are nice and secure, ready to make up an entire end wall. 
each piece of cross brace we add on here has to be even with the outside of the rib and each one is cut, leveled, and screwed to the main post. By adding a backer board one and one half inches off the front of the post, we can create a ledge for each horizontal piece to sit against and screw into. Horizontal pieces are set four feet on center to accommodate our four by eight pieces of sheathing that we're gonna bring in to cover up this entire wall. The boss pops in to check on our progress and gives us the thumbs up. After all the horizontal pieces are in, then the angle pieces can be set in place as well, making the border of our end wall. Our sheathing will extend onto the rib, the pipe, and will be secured to it with bolts. By late afternoon, the sweatshirt comes off, the sun heats up, and the work continues. For our center top brace, we set up our backing 2x4 and then place a 9 foot 2x6 across the top, leveling it and screwing it into place. The process repeats itself over and over as the clouds move in. A weather alert sounds over my phone and soon the rain begins to fall. And that's it for today, foiled by the weather again. Not surprising, seems to be a recurring theme on this project. Anytime we need rain, I can just head out and work on the high tunnel. If you build it, the rain will come. Thanks again for coming along with me. If it's not the rain, the wind is blowing me sideways, and all I really need is one or two good days to get this done. Of course, that's not gonna happen right now, as we're getting ready to leave before a short but much needed vacation this week. That means that we'll have no Thursday video this week, but expect something special on Sunday as we'll be back home and I'll have a chance to share our entire vacation with you. Please subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And if we get home and the high tunnel's done, whoever did it, I owe you a beer. I'll see you on Sunday. Until then, have a great week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.